And now, here's the woman with the power to change your life. Please welcome Gabby Roslin. Whatever you want, the show where you can finally achieve your heart's desire. You just need to want it badly enough. Now, please come with me. Okay, tonight, two people in the audience are going to become face to face with their hero. And let's just say he's famous for what he can do with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> One of these three children is going to be immortalised in Hollywood. But more about that later. Now, a fashion-conscious talking cat and a man who's died and come back as a hologram might sound unlikely, but not in the world of Red Dwarf. It's the sitcom that's made science fiction funny and become a huge cult in the process. We've scoured the intergalactic quadrants and found the three biggest Red Dwarf fans. They are Jane, Robert and Vicky! <laughs> Before we play this game, we know you're all Red Dwarf fans. We think we might sort of get to know you a little bit better, if you don't mind. So, Jane, we've spoken to some other people about you. Hi, Hi Jane. Didn't, didn't think you'd get, get on, on the, the show, show without us, did you? We thought she was a very quiet uh, person when she came at first until we found she was a bit mad on these Red Dwarf characters. She's got the earrings and the necklaces and... Uh, Posters. The T-shirts. She's got all the videos. Jane is one loaf short of a baker's dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Some people from work uh, know you very well, but there's they one do. thing that they didn't tell us about that I know about. Could there you step is. forward and show I everybody could. your tattoo? <laughs> if you don't mind. Step no, forward no and show problem. the world. Go on. Let's have a look. <laughs> okay. Oh <laughs> my god! Let's go for Jane! <laughs> now, Robert, with you, I thought. Ex-girlfriend, sister, have a look. I went out with Rob for two years and I know how mad he is about Red Dwarf. And ever since I've known Rob, he's been a red dwarf nutter. For this program, <laughs> he decided to watch every single episode. He'll go through all the storylines with me and... <laughs> he's such a red dwarf smackhead. <laughs> and Vicky! Your husband, surprise, he told us about you. Vicky doesn't just like red dwarf, she loves red dwarf. She can quote... Uh, bits from programs, uh, and she does a little bit of impression, but it's not that good. <laughs> well, she buys the videos and the T-shirts, and for a surprise, this one, which I'm not allowed to wear, and I'm surprised actually fits me. <laughs> well, we've got a truly unique surprise tonight. We've got some fantastic Red Dwarf memorabilia, but that's not all. Now, they probably already know that there's a Red Dwarf movie being made this autumn. Well, whoever wins is actually going to be working on the film. They're going to be joining the shoot, meeting the cast, and helping the crew create the incredible world of Red Dwarf. And listen to this. They are actually going to get a credit on the film as well. Millions of film goers all over the world will see our winner's name going up at the end of the movie. <laughs> Isn't it? Your face is my picture. Now, we're going to play two games tonight, but just two of our fans can go through to the head-to-head -head at the end of the show. The first two to reach five points will be back later. Now, we're going to test their red dwarf knowledge. So, hands on the buzzers, please, for one point. How many nipples does the cat have? Robert? Six. Correct. OK, you now get a chance for two bonus points. In this clip, Rimmer is worrying about making a quick getaway. We, um, should be making tracks. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not going to happen. The bulkhead's just given away and we're shipping water at a thousand gallons a second. All the canaries will be dead within one hour, except for Rimmer. 
Yes! <laughs> OK, what I'd like to know is, what is Cassandra the computer's prediction for Rimmer? He's going to die of a heart attack in about 20 minutes. Let's have a look, see if you're right. He'll be dead in 20 minutes. <laughs> One point question here. Where does Lister keep his spare trainers? Robert again. In the fridge. Absolutely correct. You get that point. Okay, again, two bonus points. If you get this, you're the first person to go through to the finale. In this clip, Lister, played by Craig Charles, is trying to escape from jail. There's got to be a way out. There hasn't been a prison built that could hold Derek Custer. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we scrape away this mortar here? Slide one of these bricks out, then using rope weave from strands of this hessian, we can kind of pulley system. So that when a guard comes in, he sets up a tripwire, gets laid out, and we put Rimmer in the guard's uniform, he leads us out, we steal some swords, and fight our way back to the bug. Okay, what I want to know is, what alternative escape plan does Crichton suggest? That they use a teleporter. Let's see if you're right. Rimmer in the guard's uniform, he leads us out, we steal some swords and fight our way back to the bug. Or we could use the teleporter. <laughs> two more points, Robert! So, that means that you are now through to the finale. So, ladies, you both have zero, so we're starting with press. <laughs> Why was Rimmer so upset when Porky Roebuck threw his trainers into the septic tank, Jane? He was wearing them. You're correct, you've got one point, chance for bonus points. This clip taken from Series 7 is set in Pride and Prejudice land. Perhaps I didn't make myself clear. I said supper is ready. OK, so Jane, what happens next, please? He fires the tank and blows up the gazebo they're sitting in. Let's have a look, see if you're right. I said supper is ready. <laughs> Two bonus points, Jane, well done. Back to one point question here. What was used to cover the hole in the Earth's ozone layer? Vicky. Giant Tooper. Correct, one point. OK, your chance now for bonus points. In this clip, the Starbug crew are in a race against time and space. <laughs> OK, what happens next, please? Starbug flies up the rat's bottom. <laughs> <laughs> You are neck and neck. Nigel, a prisoner from back in the red part one, has hundreds of facial piercings. What gets him narky? Vicky. If you go to an ear with a magnet. You're correct. You've got four points now, so if you get these two, you are through, OK? OK, what I want to know is what has happened to the cat? Um, he's turned into Dwayne Dibley. Let's have a look, see if you're right. I'm half human. What the hell happened to my teeth? <laughs> I can open from beer bottles with my upper back. You're right, you get the two points. Well done, Vicky. I'm so sorry, Jane. But that means that Vicky and Robert, congratulations, you are through to the head to head at the end of the show. Time now to get back to space and our Red Dwarf fans, Robert and Vicky. Remember, they're playing to actually work on the Red Dwarf movie itself. You really want this prize, don't you, Vicky? Oh, now, um, how long have you actually been a fan of Red Dwarf? I've watched Red Dwarf since I was 11, so that's 12 years, basically. What is it about Red Dwarf that you love so much? I love, basically, the comedy, the way the characters interact, just everything, I suppose. It's mad. You also, didn't you... 
learn something because of Red Dwarf? I actually learn Esperanto because it's, it features quite heavily in series one and two. So I thought, why not? You learned it because of the TV show? Yeah. She's a fan. Let's hear it for Vicky. <laughs> Red Dwarf quite late, am I right? Yeah, I didn't start watching it until about 92, 93, so it was already into about five series by then. So I'm a bit of a newcomer, really, I suppose. But did people. you watch all of the, did you watch the oh, five I've watched seasons? them all, yeah, I've got them all on tape now, I've watched them many times. And what is it about Red Dwarf for you? Because you just said the comedy and the characters. Yeah, right? well I think it's the fact that it's a science fiction show, but it's also a comedy, you don't get many of that. I mean, a lot of science fiction shows try and inject a bit of comedy. But um, to have a comedy show that tries to inject a bit of science fiction, it's, it's different. And and you really, you really well. want this prize as I well, really don't you? I really want this prize. This is just the best prize. OK. All right, let's hear it for Robert. <laughs> so, could you like to go and get into your positions, please? OK. Now, each of their tanks has a solar system inside. All our contestants have to do is land a ring on the five planets, starting with the highest and working down to the lowest. First to ring, each planet wins. OK, you both ready? Please don't start until I say go. On your marks, get set, go. <laughs> you know, you said you really wanted this yeah. prize. So? I can't believe it. Really? Yeah. You're delighted? Yeah. Don't go so far away, Robert, because you've actually won that job on the film. <sighs> I can't believe it. Oh, bless. Remember, now, both of you, I'm going to ask you just to hold my hands because we're going to step back in a sec because remember I actually told you... I'm so sorry you didn't get That's it. I feel you're shaky. I'm so sorry. But remember that I said there was a bit of memorabilia? Yeah. From Red Dwarf. Yeah. You have no idea what this is. Yeah. Well, especially for you, one of only three in the world. Let's take a few steps back. When I say, stand by, we have lift off. Three, two, one, look up. <laughs> There's only three of these in the world, and you actually own this. This is yours to take home with you. <laughs> Robert, what are you going to do with it? I, don't, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to find somewhere, where not I? Are you pleased? That like, is just amazing, yeah. Is um, it? Yeah, really. That's You're a happy just, boy. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure, especially when we get a reaction like that. Let's hear it for Robert! one family will be getting us all drooling when their secret traditional recipe bursts onto supermarket shelves across the entire country and three young football fanatics will be playing for the chance to run out in front of 80,000 fans at Wembley as the England team mascot. So please make a date. It could change your life. Good night. <laughs>